my entity type is here. The entities have a handle. So the entities are stored in a handle based array sort of. So you, you never store a pointer to an entity, you store a handle. And that's just to not get dangling pointers and stuff. Uh, there's a flag for if it's hidden, what the position is, what layer it's on. And, and then I have a big union of all the different types. And this I think works quite fine for like a simple game. Here's the code for spawning the cat in the game. It makes an entity with a position and some stuff. And then the variant of it, it says, okay, this one is a player cat. And then the player cat has a lots of state inside it. When I've spawned the cat, I store that uh, as a variable in my global memory blob called cat here. So this is just an entity handle. This is not a point or anything. Of course, if you want to use this, uh, entity then you must resolve it to the real entity so when you if if you want to fetch the cat entity you would do something like this cat equals get entity gmem.cat and then i would say also which type i want i expect it to be because it's just a handle it's an untyped entity handle so i say player cat what you would get from get entity is an entity instance so then, for example, this update player cat will take a player instance that that says, okay, I expect a player instance of the type player cat. And then this entity instance in, in turn is just uh, a struct that has two fields. One is the entity and the other is the variation. And the reason this is very nice is that I could have written this like this, you know, uh, like that. This just takes uh, the player cat as an entity, but then as you've seen in entity, the variant is in here and it it might be player cat, but I, I would have, in order to change any variable of this player cat thingy here, uh, I would have to do something like uh, if p.variant.player cat, and then I'd be like, okay, cat var, okay, equals, and then okay. And then in here, the, I, ha I know the variant. But I want this function to, through some type safety, be able to expect that this is an entity of player of type player cat, right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this either. It's like this player cat, because the player cat does not have the the common things up here, you know, the position and whatever. So what I do instead is this thing. I do an entity instance of player cat. So this one says using entity. And so it's this one entity pointer and there's one, ver one pointer to the, the, the variant, which in this case will be the player cat. And since it says using in front of here, I can on P, I can say P.pos equals, and then I can say a number, but I can also say P dot some variables inside player cat, blah, 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 grounded. I could also say P dot grounded equals false, which is exactly what I wanted if like I get sort of the best of both worlds. You will, you will never put an entity instance inside a struct and save it. You will still only save entity handles. But like during a frame, of course, you can have uh, functions that take this so you can pass it around and then operate on it just as if it was one monolithic object. I, I just like that I can get some type safety on function parameters. Uh, if you do, I could, you know, I could... I could send in the handle and then I had would have to resolve the handle somehow and I, I would just have to hint in the name that this handle should be resolved to this type. I could send in the entity but then I have all this problem of getting to the variant. I could send in the pointer to the variant directly but then I don't have the common stuff for entity but in this case I get everything. Uh, so I think that's very nice and it solves many many problems that might seem small but actually can be quite annoying because what you do in gameplay code is you know you do a lot get the entity do something with it affect some other entity back and forth and then you want that to be smooth